Um, my presentation will merely consist of um, a first introductory approach to Kiarostami's Shirin, where I will uh, follow the genealogical lead since five years earlier, since uh, 2003, without addressing the main themes of my full analysis of the film. I will try to read it uh, in a galloping vein. We owe to the Iranian-French author Youssef Ishakpour a most illuminating guidance alongside the route that led Kiarostami from his first pre-cinematic experiments back in June 2003 in Rome, highlighting spectatorship as the mirrored core, the chorus of the spectacle, to Shirin in 2008. Such a consummate foregrounding of the abyssal nature of the spectacle um, to Shirin. To such a consummate foregrounding of the abyssal nature of the spectacle itself, that uh, this one, the legend of Shirin and Hosro, recedes. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I just got lost. Highlighting. Um, of the spectacle, the Shirin. Yes. Yes, to such a consummate foregrounding of the abyssal nature of the spectacle itself, that this one, the spectacle itself, uh, the legend of Shirin and Khosrov, recedes into a mesmerizing unfathomable background, leaving only its metonymical witnesses behind, the spectators, now as pure act of viewing, that is to say, as enraptured body and soul participants in the spectacle. Within a five years span, he thus defined a gradual, clearly intentional process, which was to culminate with where is my Romeo in 2007 and Shirin in 2008. This particular trend in Kiarostami's intermediate thinking of cinema offers a variation to, indeed a radicalization of, the author's metacinematic trademark, of which Close Up and Taste of Cherry are two of the foremost examples. Kiarostami, now, step by step, yeah, I will follow three different stages from 2003 to 2008. First, Kiarostami, himself a multimedia artist conveying his remediation of the real through either photography, poetry, video installation, cinema or painting, began this itinerary in Rome with a plein air complex staging of the Iranian mystery play depicting, or rather ritually embodying, the founding myth of Shiism, the pitiable, uh, the pitiable martyrdom of the prophet's descendant, Iman Hussein in Karbala, named Tadzieh of which there are around a thousand different variants and a dozen canonical versions spreading all over Iran. Actually, he doubled the spectacle by placing the Italian spectators, spectators in a circle surrounding the central stage where the Iranian theatrical performers were enacting this ceremony of mourning, highly inflated by a contagious rhetorical pathos. But outcircling those in the middle, the Italian spectators, by means of six giant video screens amplifying the emotional response of Iranian weeper wise spectators, carefully captured in film by Kiarostami all through his country. But by doing so, he even tripled, if not actually multiplied, the spectacle. On the, one, on the one hand, the post-liturgical nature of the follower's quasi-responsory reaction is itself part of the ceremony in its proclamatory, uh, proclamatory self-demonstrative quality, in a sense that encompasses the spectator within the spectacle as an essential element pertaining to its wholeness. On the other hand, by simultaneously heightening the role of the 
by simultaneously heightening and cooling down the role of the legitimate uh, Iranian spectators, he both introduces, in the midst of the weeping devotees, his own spicy touch of the almost impersonal, detached documentary filmmaker, in this case, a fake documentary filmmaker, emphatically attested in 10, the film 10, and widens in a single blow the tensive divide between the already coexisting sacred and profane realms of the original Tazie mystery play. Thus allowing the clash between the unconcerned Western spectators therein and the absent, if fervent, Iranian spectators to broaden the sacred versus profane issue to the point of pairing together both classes of implied spectators, the Iranian and the Italian ones and to eventually make the Western ones, after his Iranian counterpart, integral to the general spectacle, now enclosed by the director around everyone and everything as one sole giant intermedial intercultural installation, full of internal tensions and silent interrogations. Although it does not constitute a sacred ritual, the Tazia is nevertheless a staged ritual that goes beyond mere representation and does actualize, if not otherwise through deep sentimental resonance, the events wherefrom the community stemmed in the first place, the community of the participative beholders. The viewers partake of the sorrowful, sorrowful spectacle as much as this one's own intrinsic uh, being viewed character is inscribed in its core. They become a community through it, and it becomes the manifested truth through them. Accordingly, the contrived character of the pathos deployed on stage and the performative tenor of the public's role within this summoning celebration and all-embracing uh, representation are both to be taken as the two wings of a unique pact of grief binding into a necessary correlation the two classes of performers face to face where to utter excruciating pain is the appropriate manner to enact suffering and to perform, to perform weeping is the ascribed way there is to weep. We are here to cry and to make you cry, the stage director announces at the ritual opening of this sacrificial ceremony of mourning each year. And we can thus anticipate how much these uh, how much these inherited features should shade from the outset the cliched objection regarding Shirin to the, I quote, 114 famous Iranian theater and cinema actresses and a French star's simulation of being moved by a movie that does not even exist within the context of a sophisticated fictionalized documentary germane to Kiarostami's mastery. Their authenticity is rooted, however, in that distinctive half-willingness to mourn through performing the act of mourning, a contrivance they themselves are the first to document and to make apparent in order precisely to increase the degree of their participation, thus depassing this very profane alternative, an ambiguity Kiarostami is happy to collect from tradition. If later on Shirin will be said not to document actual grief, but to trick us instead into a highly professional fictional performance delivered by the elite of Iranian actresses, this is as truthful as the repeated and rather significantly error of referring to the 114 Iranian actresses and the French star as compounding an exclusive audience where there are at least as many male spectators likewise present and readily visible, even if sitting a little behind in the penumbra and not carrying the sentimental chain of the events, which is another manner to con conspicuously gendering the audience, but a much more subtle one. However, thanks both, thanks both to its historical intermedial nature 
and to its condition as the final outcome of a studied process, Shirin playfully quotes and cinematically documents the performing character of grief and mourning in the somewhat twined Iranian traditions of the Islamic Tarziyeh and the pre-Islamic tale of Shirin and Khosrov, as well as the contrived quality of the whole spectacle. Indeed, Kiarostami retained from this classical theatrical sphere and rendered cinematically autonomous two capital elements, very much along the lines of Marguerite Duras or Jean-Luc Godard, who separated sound, voice, word, noise, visual image and screen as single filmic components corresponding to self-sufficient cinematic acts mostly didactic, not necessarily in a Brechtian sense. Thenceforth, uh, acts equally liable to be brought to bear by themselves and or to establish between them new and precedented moods of non-totalizing meaningful articulations. So the two ways, the two uh, elements retained by Kiarostami from, from uh, the theatrical tradition. First, the, the contrived nature of the representation assumed to the extent of calling the attention to itself in order to fulfill its nature as a presentation of a real event opposite to the illusory representation of a fiction. This in the case of Tazier. And the second element, the cyclical reinforcement of grief and sufferance by the side spectacle of grieving spectators posing as wheeling, active weepers participating in the very spectacle they thus become a part of. A mark common this time to both dramatic forms, the Tazier and Shirin. It is the genius of Kiarostami to have subverted this capricious dramatic curve of a side spectacle that needs to get emotionally heightened and almost sorted out as a performance in its own right in order precisely to be able to be reinvested into the main one, the main spectacle, as pure surplus value and to be absorbed in the unique interplay of those two sides of a single ceremony. How? The filmmaker first promoted the filmic independence of the viewer's performance as separate image and self-contained spectacle without reverse shot, itself the object of a detached, chiarostami-like camera view. Be it in the six panels surrounding the outdoors Roman staging of the Tazier, or as the unique panel saturating the scene in Shirin, while still keeping in balance its emphatic relatedness to the main spectacle, which remains central in the Rome installation, and paradoxically, paradoxically becomes not central but absolute through its apparent disappearance in the 2008 film. That is to say, Kiarostami perfectly understood and expanded the lesson of the Tazier. The more you decouple the audience's performance from the main one, the more the first increasingly reverts to this later as a powerful act now, the act of an image, and no longer as a subordinated reaction, the psychological reaction of a viewer embarking in the much too close realm of the transcendent mythical event. And the more it extends forward, in turn, the ontological range and rank of the mystery that is being revealed there. The prominence traditionally conferred, traditionally conferred to the performing audience in this theater of pathos where the spectators relate to the sacred or profane event by more than the mere sight or participation, rather by the exertion of an act, is raised in Kiarostami's cinema or video to the status of an act of image 
projected onto an outer limit of screens, establishing the audience in a mechanical, no longer human plane, occupying the horizon and looking from there. Looking from there back to the center, which is the case in the Rome uh, installation, or uh, looking from there outwards and beyond, which is the case in Shirin. This whole set of transformations in the balance between the actors and the spectators' roles is thus at the origin of the device Chiarostemi arrives at in Shirin. First, the intercut between two films, what I will call the uh, film one and film two, Shirin one and Shirin two, the non-existing one existing through this magical intercut, the same way it is through images at first and then through the uncovered ears that Shirin and Khosrov become acquainted and entranced in love, and not simply a correspondence between sound and image. So we are faced uh, with an intercut between, between two films, the film uh, F1 and the film F2, and not simply uh, facing a, a correspondence between sound and image. Films one and two do not correspond to the film we see and the film we hear. It's not the case. And uh, we are not facing an endless uh, mock Kuleshov effect, effect lacking all reverse shot between audience and screen. Such a double, double dealing was developed by Kiarostami in its two possible modalities. In Presencia, the Roman Tazier, and in Absencia, Shirin, the movie, not without crossing a few intermediary stations, usually insufficiently taken, taken into account. The second step now. The second stage takes place in Brussels, Les Halles, this time reducing the stage to a minimum. The Iranian actors limit themselves to deliver a synopsis in Farsi, providing the vanishing background for what had become by now the actual spectacle, the screens now in the foreground, magnifying the compassionate believers mirrored in Kiarostami's digital registration of the live events submitted to the royal rule of cinema montage. Still, he would not, uh, Kiarostami, who would not dare to kill Hussein the martyr for the second time. The sacred core resisted the era of its technological reproduction, standing as a play ritually reviving a transhistorical event made present. And Kiarostami renounced either to abolish it completely and to replace it with what would then turn to be a simple documentary about a devotion, or still worse, to creatively convert it into what Hitchcock used to call, to call pure cinematics, and Eisenstein coined as dialectical montage, roughly, roughly the emergence of a tertiary, tertiary cinematic entity, entirely the product of the interplay of the single ones in play. In Shirin, that would be the onlookers on one side and the soundtrack on the other. So, in the installation, looking at Tazier, the spectators, to, uh, an installation from 2004, Kiarostami does not dismiss as yet that central stage, although he already loosens the tension between sacred and profane, those two poles that used to oscillate between the two stages, by dangerously reducing the presence of the first to its mere sign. The looking uh, in the title, looking at Tazier, the looking in the title cultivates a strict chiarostamic <coughs> duplicity, meaning both the passionate stare of the participants in Tazier, the medieval mystery play that amounts to the content of the image, and the scrutiny of the spectacle of that participation, which is the image itself, coinciding with Tazier, the ceremony itself. The second look points to Tazier not as an object for sight of a first, for a first audience, 
but as a whole for a second audience, including that side of it, for the first one. Paradoxically, rescuing its uni unity while dismembering its components by stepping back and regaining the wholeness through the participatory impulse which displays the property of plying the spectacle upon itself. <clears throat> These traits are all important to understand the role <clears throat> of the over hundred, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> the role of the, of the over 200 spectators referring Shirin the play back to itself, besides mirroring it on the screen of their faces and gazes. More than just watch it, they belong to it. They are part of a larger cultural unit, represented, for instance, by ancient ritual ceremonial, ceremonials or medieval plays of passion. Just like, hopefully, Cinema 2, Kiarostami seems to imply, especially when, according to the etymological meaning of sacred, it manages to maintain as pure, segregated mystery <laughs> that transcendent, deadly face of the image. If intermediality there is in Shirin, it should consist of a sort of trans-intermediality. This film and what precedes it do not just draw on theatre or write as media, channels to represent realities or to present representations, and do not simply join together the medial forces of video, spectatorship as an institution, and the theatrical stage for the play or the ground for the sacred rite. Rather, it touches the very verge of what a medium is, the point where the medium fulfills its mediating quality and unfolds or transcends itself, unraveling its inner desire to become the currency of the absolute, or when it devises or when it engenders the uncertain stage for a transcendence to be. The intermedial work of what we could now call the Shirin project, uh, meaning the hermeneutical uh, series comprising the Tazier performance installation in Rome, looking at Tazier, Where is my Romeo, and Shirin. This uh, Shirin project consists then of questioning the power a medium has to bring its own content into presence, not through form, but through the actual presence of its spectators qua participants no matter how far the analytical dialysis will have to go in the process of representing the representation, and how awkwardly the spectators will have to be shown to actually be there and actually happen in Shirin's formula by invading the screen and usurping the image that, that menaces to neutralize their presence, their reality, turning them into a mere certified copy so that the inimaginable dimension of the, events, uh, of the events called forth by the medium is allowed to appear as such, that is to say, as hidden, as unpresentable. Third step, the profane, plainly human equivalence in Shirin to the religious subject would prove to be more accommodating for the filmmaker's purpose of reassembling an overwhelming whole out of parts each previously, previously submitted to an hyperbolic treatment. Respectively, the public, monopolizing the proscenium and seemingly having confiscated the entire movie, and, second, that most strange presence, the presence of Shirin, the movie we never see, that's mo that most strange presence felt turn in turn as theater, as film, as live performance, as Neverland conjured up by the declamatory voices, and as persistent 
post-retinian effects of the inaugural illustrative images seen in the film's prologue, all placed at the same time the nearest possible to us, coming from our back, vastly surrounding our necks and speaking directly to our ears, and yet absolutely outside the world's space. For, having ourselves been placed in an ingenious continuum with the visible portion of the film's world, we are nevertheless objectively unable to turn our heads and look behind us. The invisible fourth wall entrapped us for good as the wall of invisibility proper. As a matter of fact, in order to play the game of the apophatic image, a, self, a sort of duly self-prohibition, Kiarostami used and further elaborated one of the most cinematic of all devices, and indeed one that is unique to cinema, avoiding, avoiding the post-pictorial re resource of the black screen, still employed by himself in, for instance, Taste of Cherry, and before by the Portuguese filmmaker João César Monteiro in his 2000 film Branca de Neve, Snow White, uh, which amounts to inscribe, sorry, Snow White, which amounts to inscribe the absent, the, the so the, the uh, sorry, the, the black screen amounts to inscribe the absent in the present sight of presence, that is, on screen, even if occupying it directly with a black shadow. So avoiding this post-pictorial resource of the black screen, still employed by himself, the Iranian director inscribes now the absent in that absent sight which is nevertheless ne necessarily coupled to the screen as realm of the movement image and the time image, the off-screen topological reference. All the more when this absent sight, the off-screen, consists most presumably of a screen, precisely. This outstretched absence in the realm of the absence, the off-screen, and not in the realm of the presence, the black screen, corresponds, moreover, to a rather particular kind of off-space. It is located, one, off-screen, two, behind, behind the front of the screen, behind the front of the screen, if we rightly read the space vector as approaching, as coming, coming from there to here, Three, prolonging this vectorial space across and through ours and going behind ourselves and beyond <coughs> our backs, following this time the vector of an irreversible space. While between our eyes and those of the Iranian, the Iranian spectators, the space is still reversible, it becomes irreversible to us and irretrievable for us, and by far a darker background than the one in front of us where the fourth row of moviegoers fade into a blurred black space, when it depasses our own position and plunges into an inaccessible <coughs> space region and space direction, where, fourth, there is finally, where it finally opens itself unto yet another limitless world, the Asia of Shirin, the Asia of Shirin and Kostrov, or the Verona of Romeo and Juliet. And, well, I, I end by now. Thank you very much. Half an hour.